You're watching the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, dangerous temperatures can affect our elderly. KOAM's Melissa Alexis shares how you can help. Also, a Carthage food pantry opens up ahead of the new school year to help families with food needs. And no alert day today. Temperatures still hot, but the heat index values much more manageable. We'll have a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 o'clock on this Friday morning. It's a finally Friday in the four states yes, on what is. has been one of the longest weeks in a long oh, time. Boy, it's been so hot. It's just been dragging along. It, it certainly makes it feel that way. Yes. I mean, it really does. The heat makes you tired and it slows you down a bit and it makes it difficult to get things done. Right. And so it's just. It makes those simple tasks take longer because you've got to go slower. You have to take more breaks. You got to drink more water. You know, it's been a long yeah. week. Imagine what it's like area. for the vulnerable populations like the elderly and children as yeah, well. Absolutely. Matter of fact, vulnerable populations like the elderly can be more susceptible to heat related illnesses. KOM's Melissa Alexis shares what we can do to protect them. Temperatures over 100 is just hard to keep cool. Floyd Gwaltnett frequents the Joplin Senior Center weekly for bingo and socialization. He says it's been too hot to spend extended periods of time outside. I go walk to the mail and get it and then come back. He prefers to spend his time inside at the Senior Center as opposed to outdoors in the heat. He even plans his daily walks around avoiding the hottest parts of the day. Early in the morning, uh, I'll walk around my apartment complex and then late at night. Adrian Weston is the public education and information specialist at Area Agency on Aging in Joplin. And she says health issues can make seniors more susceptible to the heat. People that have blood pressure med problems may be on medication that can affect the levels of hydration in your body. So you really want to listen to your body and make sure that you're keeping your hydration balanced. Weston says the agency helps out by providing free fans to seniors who need it. One of her concerns are retired people who may avoid turning on their air conditioners to avoid a high electricity bill. A lot of people that do live on fixed income, they have very, very limited resources to begin with. And so whenever it comes time to run the air conditioner and have to keep it on, pretty much 24-7 when it's hot like this, they are very reluctant. Weston also encourages people to check in on their elderly loved ones to make sure they're staying safe when the temperatures are dangerously high. Reporting in Joplin, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Weston says some chronic illness can affect the body's ability to regulate body temperature. She recommends making sure that your elderly loved ones have access to an air conditioner or fan to stay cool. And it's important to check up on those ACs oh, as well. You know, we've uh, we've run a story yesterday talking about air conditioner yes. maintenance. You know, some of these folks are on a fixed income. Maybe Absolutely. you can help out and, and try and take care of uh, their air conditioning unit if it's not working properly. Certainly. So. Yes. Uh, the good news is we're going to get a little break from the heat today. It's not going to be overly noticeable, but I think for anybody who's been working outdoors this week or working in an environment where there may not be much AC, you might notice it. It's going to be a little drier in terms of the air today. This is a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. We've got some partly cloudy skies out there, and that's thanks to some dying showers and storms across parts of Oklahoma well to our southwest, but the cloud cover still reaching this far to the north and east, so we're going to get that uh, for a little bit. Modoc camera 20th and range also looking good as folks get their day underway on this finally Friday and they're probably doing so and breathing a little sigh of relief with some cooler temperatures this morning. We'll have drier air later as this cold front pushes on through by noon. It's going to be well south of our area. Now, of course, in the summertime, the word the term cold front's a little deceiving. It's not going to make it cold by any means, but it is going to bring our temperatures down a bit and bring our heat index values down significantly. So it's still hot today. Don't get me wrong. Don't don't go thinking that it's going to suddenly be better. We're still talking low mid 90s out there, but our heat index values will only be two, maybe three degrees warmer than that as we head through the afternoon. So no heat index values into the triple digits expected today. We're at 71 in Joplin and there's Pittsburgh 72 right now. You can see where that cold front is. So for those that are still kind of close to it, still a little muggy out there, but temperatures continuing to fall a bit upper 60s, low 70s. And as we head into today again, the air is a bit drier. Humidity levels much lower heat index 
price values much lower. Still hot though, upper low to mid 90s rather. Partly cloudy skies heading into the afternoon. They'll start to gradually clear heading into the evening. This break from the heat is very short lived. Unfortunately, we'll go over the details of what we're expecting heading into next week here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, the newest Missouri executive order prohibits the sale of unregulated cannabis products. Missouri Governor Mike Parson announced the order which bans the sale of foods containing psychoactive cannabis compounds unless the establishment is an FDA approved source, such as a licensed dispensary. Parson wants to decrease minors access to cannabis products by banning the products from retail establishments with only a liquor license. For more information, you can go to our website, koamnewsnow.com. The Joplin Public Library and Post Art Library have begun accepting applications to fill booths for the 2024 Joplin Writers Fair. The application process is free and open to all writers and writers groups, including published and non-published. Successful applicants will be notified via email by September 13th. The fair is scheduled for Saturday, October 12th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. inside the library. You can head over to koamnewsnow.com for more information. A Fairview Christian Church in Carthage is trying to make sure families have food ahead of the school year. They've opened their food pantry for anyone in need. It'll be open once a week every Thursday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. The church plans to open weekly through at least November 14th. We like to have every week at least four of these five areas. We all we always want to have protein. Um, we uh, like to have some bread item, um, vegetables, fruit, and it's nice if we have something sweet. Fairview Church is at 2320 South Grand Avenue in Carthage. And those are our top news stories this half hour coming up next. Three American prisoners are home after a prisoner swap between the U.S., Russia, and several other countries. We'll have the details. Topping Nation Watch this morning. After a week of tension in Venezuela following the presidential election, the United States announces its recognition of candidate Edmundo Gonzalez as the winner. Venezuela's Electoral Council declared President Nicolas Maduro as the winner of the presidential election on Monday. But hours later, the main opposition coalition said they had evidence that Edmundo Gonzalez was the true winner. Multiple governments are calling on Venezuela's national Electoral Council to share the detailed vote tallies. In previous elections, the council had shared the vote counts with the public. Well, President Biden is expected to kick off the Democratic National Convention as the keynote speaker on the first night. Biden was previously slated to close the program, but with the president passing the torch to Vice President Kamala Harris, Plans have changed. According to sources, Biden is expected to deliver a prime time speech during the opening night of the Chicago Convention, with the evening centered on Biden's legacy and achievements. Harris will cap off the convention Thursday night once she is formally named the Democratic candidate. A remarkable return from Americans formerly imprisoned in Russia, with the Biden administration giving an excited and heartfelt welcome overnight upon their arrival home. Fox News correspondent Chanley Painter has the latest on the deal that got them back, plus what could be a long road ahead as they try and readjust to life after prison. Home and free at last, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, and Russian-American journalist Alsu Kermusheva. Arriving in the United States Thursday after being released from Russia, the former detainees landing at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland to a warm welcome by President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and their family members. The three are expected to head to a medical center in San Antonio, Texas, where their conditions will be evaluated. Russian authorities arrested, convicted them in sham trials. 
Their return is part of the largest prisoner exchange between the U.S. and Moscow in post-Soviet history. The deal required cooperation from a number of other nations, ultimately resulting in two dozen people being freed, 16 of those from Russia, including German citizens and Russian political prisoners. This in exchange for eight Russians held in Western countries. You know what I said? Alliances make a difference. He stepped up and took a chance for us. It mattered a lot. <laughs> Applause breaking out earlier in the day throughout the Wall Street Journal newsroom upon learning of Gerskovich's release. Everybody has worked so hard toward this, putting the spotlight on Evan, putting the spotlight on press freedom. Former President Donald Trump, meanwhile, blasted the deal on Truth Social, writing in part, quote, our negotiators are always an embarrassment to us. I got back many hostages and gave the opposing country nothing. Psychology experts meantime say it can be challenging for many former detainees to adapt to normal life, adding it's critical they are monitored for symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm Jaylee Painter, Fox News. And those are our top national stories. Now here's Chris with a look at the forecast. Yeah, we've got a day where we've got lower humidity levels out there and we are going to be still hot, but not nearly as muggy as it has been lately. We'll have another full look at your forecast here in just a moment. And a little later, first responders in a small Kansas town were called in to help rescue a toddler who had fallen down a pipe. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It's now 716 on this finally Friday here in the four states. This is a live look from Modoc Camera 20th and Range Line in Joplin. Looking pretty good so far. Traffic, of course, is moving. That's always a good sign. And uh, looking great from the KDOT Camera at 69 in Kansas Crossing just south of Pittsburgh. Pretty decent start to the day out there. It's still going to be hot for us, but thanks to this cold front that's still slowly pushing to our south, our humidity levels are going to be a lot lower today, so the heat index is not going to be exceeding 100 degrees like it has for the last several days. But again, don't let it deceive you. It is still going to be hot. We're looking at highs going in the low to mid 90s across the area, but our heat index values should only be two, maybe three degrees higher than the air temperature outside. So pretty good temperatures tonight will be below normal. We're going to remain dry out there and we head into Saturday. We're going to start to see humidity levels climb up just a little bit. It's going to be a little muggier tomorrow and for some of our Western counties a little hotter, but still not awful, at least not yet. And then we go into our Sunday and that's when awful starts to make a return. Humidity dew point levels start to climb on Sunday and we're going to be looking at temperatures much warmer across a broader portion of the area as we see more mid upper 90s out there. Quick look outside again from 7th and Range Line looking great. We've got clouds from the showers that are dying off down in Oklahoma. Nothing in our area though. 71 in Joplin. Winds are calm again here. Still a bit muggy. That cold front not far enough south yet. Uh, uh, but it is on its way out. Now those a little bit further north, the air is beginning to dry out. You're getting that north breeze pushing on in. Most of us uh, low to mid 70s out there. We got 68 though in Monette is one of the cool spots as we get the day started. Heading through the morning, partly cloudy skies as those showers again to our south and west begin to decay. We'll be about low mid 80s by 11 o'clock this morning. We head into the afternoon hours again, still hot. Clouds gradually decreasing, low mid 90s, but heat index values mid, maybe some upper 90s here and there. So it's still hot, still a little uncomfortable, but considerably better than where we have been across the area. We'll have clear skies heading into the evening, down to about 78 by 10 o'clock tonight. Overnight lows tonight, again, below average, upper 60s, and maybe a few stray clouds here or there. As we go ahead into the next few days, again, low mid 90s Saturday, mid upper 90s on Sunday, and sunshine sticking around. And unfortunately, as you can see, that dangerous heat returning as we head into the next work week out there. Uh, we'll go into the lower 100s, unfortunately, and if with those pop-up storm chances, you know what that means as well. Humidity dew point levels are climbing. That's what feeds those storms. So we're talking heat index values back up in that 105, 110 degree range as we head into the next work week. Uh, that's a check of your forecast. We will be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Well, terrifying moments for a Kansas family after a 14 month old boy fell into a 12 foot deep pipe in their front yard. It happened Sunday afternoon in the town of Mound Ridge. Gabriela Hernandez spoke with the family and the rescuers who worked quickly to save the child. 
way that Eli called out for his little brother. He acted like he was never going to see him again. The family of 14-month-old Bentley recounting the horrifying moment their son fell into a 12-foot deep hole in their yard. I can't imagine what she thought whenever she saw him fall because for all she knew it was a sewer line, it was full of water, or it was 50 feet deep. I mean, she had no idea. No idea what the hole might be for, but... By the grace of God, that boy was carried down that hole by an angel, so... This body camera video showing the incredible moment crews work together using a makeshift catch pole to save toddler Bentley and get him back into the arms of his family. Mound Ridge PD officer Ronnie Wagner sharing how he came up with the idea. We use them for catching dogs and stuff like that, and I made one out of similar materials in the past to catch a raccoon in someone's closet. So that's where I got the idea from it. And although Wagner came up with the idea. Our first attempt was just with a rope itself, um, and the problem was is that a 14-month-old child um, does not handle commands very well. The child fought us and would try to take the rope uh, you know, away from, from his body and wouldn't allow it to get to where it needed to be. And so that's why the PPC was a, a great addition. It was a team effort. Yeah, he was actually in the hole for 23 minutes. It, it seemed like a blur. Uh, everything happened so fast. It's haunting to feel so helpless knowing that your child is in serious need of help and looking down at him as he was screaming. I think he knew that people were there to help him. And once he got out, I, I can't express that he hasn't been in this good of a mood in a long time. Oh, you talk about a terrifying event for that family, and uh, hopefully they get that hole either figured out or covered up at some point because obviously it's quite dangerous. Absolutely. A very scary situation there, but very innovative. Yeah, the know. way they got him out. Yes. Um, the good news is his uh, physical injuries were minor, and he's now back to his usual self, so that's some excellent news, but still a terrifying, terrifying situation. I can't even imagine. Well, coming up, Marion Day's officially kick, has kicked off how this year's celebration could be record-breaking. And we've got a hot but slightly less humid day in the forecast today. We'll have another look at that forecast when we come back. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 727. I'm Elise Snowy. Well, it could be a record turnout this weekend for Carthage's Marion Days, but it's too soon to tell. The Carthage Chamber expects the city to grow by 100,000 over the weekend. The four-day Vietnamese Catholic Festival kicked off yesterday, drawing visitors from around the nation and even from overseas. Area hotels, motels, and restaurants could be packed for the next few days, and thousands of participants are staying in tents despite the heat. The festival included a mass and a procession last night. The events, celebrations, and lots of food continue through Sunday. Well, there is a plenty of things happening at the Crawford County State Park. On Wednesday, six loads of gravel were added to the walkways around the flower beds at the Butterfly Garden. The gravel is part of a project aimed to help improve the garden and the Friends of Crawford State Park is the group making the effort to improve the grounds. A fun fact, the garden itself is in the shape of a butterfly. And Crawford State Park will also be putting on a kids catfish clinic this weekend. The clinic is backed by popular demand and will allow kids of all ages to participate. Rods, reels, and all equipment needed for a successful day of fishing will be provided free of charge. A health provider in southwest Missouri celebrates National Health Center Week with a free lunch. Access Family Care in the McDonald County Health Department teamed up to host the lunch yesterday. The event also provided a way for families to come in and get their kids vaccinated before going back to school, courtesy of the health department. Just that the McDonald County Health Department is here for you guys to help the community. Um, we have vaccinations. We have lots of other services we offer, such as lab draws, 
uh, nursing and m maternal child health. The event also provided information on health care, wellness and prevention, diabetes, cancer and more. You can also head over to koemnewsnow.com slash education for more vaccine information. Now here's Chris with a look at the forecast. Now we've got ourselves a pretty decent day out there. We've got a few clouds thanks to some showers taking place well to our south and west with the cloud cover reaching up this far. Cold fronts pushing through and it's not necessarily going to make it cold, but it is going to make it a little more tolerable outside. Looking good from our camera at 7th and range line and from the MoDOT camera at 20th and range line as well. And of course, as long as the cars are moving, that's always a good sign unless the lights red. We don't want them moving through the red light, of course. All right, future track for today. That cold front by noon is well to our south, so that's going to shift all of our winds out of the north, and they could occasionally gust upwards of 20. But the big story here is it's bringing in much drier air. Humidity levels are going to drop across the area, which means any heat index we see is only going to be two, maybe three degrees warmer than the air temperature. And the air temperature for most of us is going to be a lot more manageable, too, as we go uh, roughly low to mid 90s out there. So again, it's still hot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not crazy. I know it's still hot but it's going to be better. We're not talking temperatures in the triple digits and heat index values to 115 today. We're talking low mid 90s for temperatures, mid maybe upper 90s for heat index values. So still hot but a little better. 71 in Joplin right now, 73 in Pittsburgh. Temperatures across the area, the cold front again sinking to our south. That line's going to be a little less defined here soon because we are going to start to warm up. We still have a hot, hot day ahead of us, but we're in the low to mid 70s for most of us across the area. We'll have partly cloudy skies, those clouds gradually decreasing into the evening, and again, highs low mid 90s out there. So again, not a bad day. Still hot, but better than where we have been. We do have dangerous heat in the forecast once again, though. We'll talk about that in detail here in just a few more minutes, Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, students heading to school later this month in Mountain Home, Arkansas, will be greeted with new phone lockers. Aiden Savage explains how the district plans to use the lockers to keep students attention while in the classroom. They were used to having technology 24 seven, and so we started looking at ways to kind of dial that back. In today's modern age, nearly if not all junior high and high school kids have a cell phone. In the education scene, those devices have caused more headache than help in the classroom. They're constantly checking their um, texts, Snapchats, the social media that comes through. While cell phones have been a problem since students began carrying them, the district saw an increase in phone use after 2020. Really, since we we came back in 2021 that our students were distracted. They were on, they were used to having technology 24 seven. That's what made the district adopt a new phone policy regarding phone use in the classroom. It went into effect before the 2023-24 school year. They would take their cell phone and put it in a designated area so that that was not a distraction on their on their tables or in their backpacks. Students are still allowed to be on their phone during passing periods, so between classes and at lunch. This year, the school is installing a new device for students to stay off their phones during class. Every classroom will have these and students are, will have an opportunity to put their phones in the boxes so that they can focus on their work during class. The school said it saw success with the phone policy last year and is only hoping that carries into this next school year. So far, we've seen a, a positive impact on students and student achievement. Students in Mountain Home, Arkansas will return to the classroom on August 19th. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOEM Morning News. Well, it's Friday and you know what that means. Shannon Becker joins us in the studio with his big three stories of the week. Welcome back. We've got Shannon Becker in the studio with his big three news stories of the week. Good morning and happy Friday to you, Shannon. Well, thank you and you as well. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the big three yes. live and local stories this week. What's happening where you live? It was a week ago this last week. Uh, we were on the road right after the big three and went down to Oklahoma, Craig County, Oklahoma, where three states came together, investigators uh, looking in a strip pit. And that they wouldn't say specifically who they were searching for, mm -hmm. but they did allude mm -hmm. to they were looking for two females. Okay. Uh, one possibly from Northwest Arkansas, but also uh, Oklahoma authorities, we didn't get to talk to, I'm sure, Welch girls. That's on the top of a lot of people's minds. Absolutely. It's not very far from Vanita. It's a hot spot where investigators say CIs, criminal informants, yes. have come forward and said since a gentleman had died this last November, people have come forward with more information oh, on wow. these missing persons. They didn't locate anything specifically, but they do have three spots they'll continue to search 
uh, it was very uh, precarious, I guess you could say, for the sure. divers, and they weren't prepared for all of that. Uh, we'll continue to follow that story in Northeast Oklahoma. Our number two story, KOAM News Now, tragedy on Table Rock mm -hmm. Lake. It was last Friday morning about 1130. A boy, six years old from Carthage, was kneeboarding behind a boat and came in contact with the propeller. It was in the Clevenger, Clevenger Cove boat launch area. Yes. Uh, he died there on the scene, a tragedy. A lot of people from the area, though, have come together and they have a GoFundMe online for the family. Uh, it's just going to be an extended time of healing, I guess you could kind of say. So, such a heartbreaking uh, story. A lot there. of people are helping out with that. More details on our website. KOM News Now, number one this week, live and local. I'd never even heard of this place before. Have really? you? Have yes, you? I have. I've well, been there before. Hey, listen, I'm, fantastic. I'm fat, so I'm all for cake. <laughs> but I noticed this no, <laughs> nothing but cakes was coming. Uh, it's right. Uh, the old, where St. Louis Bread Company was, or uh, yes. Panera, whatever you want to call it, next to Pro 100 on 32nd Street. They, in fact, started building it out this last week. We caught them there as they were kind of tearing the yeah. shell out and they're getting ready to start building it. They couldn't tell us when they're going to be ready, okay. but I would assume sometime before Christmas. This is very exciting. Yeah. Very it looks exciting. delicious. Like yes. I said. And our bonus, our bonus story of the week, talking about delicious. Last night we were at the Marion Days with mm -hmm. 100,000 of our best friends <laughs> and uh, they have different restaurants set up. I want to kind of explain this to a yes, lot of people. Please. So these are actual real restaurants. This one's from Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, that's a boba tea stand. Wow. So they, they close their restaurant in Texas. They come up here and they set up and everything. Uh, Fascinating. In fact, the health department inspects them. Okay. Uh, they're approved. You go in just like any restaurant. Uh, you have a table with a server. The Knights of Columbus, if you don't like Vietnamese food, mm -hmm. Knights of Columbus from Carthage, they have the chicken strips, funnel cakes, fried Oreos. Gotta have it. <laughs> normal <laughs> carnival <laughs> fare. So if you don't like one, there's always the other. So best times I would suggest anytime after five o'clock if you okay. want to eat dinner. But I mean, they do serve lunch as well. So that's the big three this week. Uh, maybe you'll get a chance to go to yes, Marion Days. Yes, I think yeah. I shall. Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you all about the parking too. It's on our website. Okay. So Wonderful. Check it out. Well, thank you again, Shannon, for being with us this morning as always. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 741. Now on this finally Friday in the four states, we're starting with a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Got some clouds out there, and again, that is courtesy of some showers and dying thunderstorms well to our southwest. No rain in our area this morning, but the cloud cover is reaching pretty far back to the north and east. Now you can see that cloud cover from our camera 7th and range line in Joplin. MoDOT camera 20th and range line also looking pretty good this morning. We're going to head across state lines to Kansas, getting some sunshine here on the KDOT camera at 69 in Kansas Crossing, of course, just south of Pittsburgh. So it's a little bit of a cooler start out there for us today. It's going to be a slightly more tolerable day across the area. Once that cold front sinks further south, those north winds kick in, could occasionally gust up to 20 miles an hour, but they're going to be blowing in much drier air. Our humidity levels are going to drop significantly, which means our heat index values are going to drop significantly. Our temperatures, they come back a little too compared to where we've been the last few days, but not as significantly, unfortunately. A cold front in the summertime is a little uh, misleading. Uh, it doesn't really make it cold necessarily. Heading into tonight, though, below average temperatures across the area. One thing you'll note that's missing from the future track over the next few days is any rain. Unfortunately, we will remain dry. Saturday, again, it's going to be another warm day for us, and some of us will be a little warmer out west. Could go into some of the mid to upper 90 degree range, but humidity levels still expected to be a little below, uh, a little low out there for Saturday, but as we head into Sunday, uh, winds start to shift around a bit on us, start to see some southerly winds, and we start to see those humidity and dew point levels creep up as well. Quick look at temperatures. We are sitting at 71 in Joplin. Again, still a little muggy. That cold front's not far enough south yet, but it'll start to dry out and the humidity level will begin to drop. Further north, though, humidity level's already dropping, and so it's a pretty pleasant start. We got low mid 70s across the region this morning, and these winds still gradually shifting out of the north for us, and they'll continue to do so again as that cold front sinks a little further to the south. Partly cloudy skies through the morning, low to mid 80s by 11 o'clock. So our highs today are still a bit above normal, low mid 90s. But remember those heat index values, thanks to the lower humidity, are only going to be two, maybe three degrees warmer than the air temperature out there. So not a huge difference. Again, it's still hot. You still want to stay hydrated, make sure you're taking breaks and everything. But at least we're not dealing with 110 degree, 115 degree heat index values across the area today. Heading into the this evening, skies clear out. 
down to about 78 by 10. Overnight lows again below normal mid upper 60s out there. Maybe a few clouds here and there. Unfortunately, though, once we get past Saturday, I mentioned the uh, humidity levels start climbing back up Sunday. Temperatures do as well. We start getting back into the triple digits as we head into the next work week. And while we do see some thunderstorm chances or at least some pop up storm chances toward the end of next week, you folks here in the four states know what that means, though. Humidity and dew point levels are going to be even higher because that's what feeds some of those storms. So we go back to those heat index values, maybe 105 to 110 again as we close out next week. That's a check of your forecast. We are going to send it over to Elise now with Consumer Watch. Thanks, Chris. Well, the number of houses on the market just hit a post pandemic high. Realtor.com says the number of homes actively for sale nationwide grew 36.6% year over year last month. Economists say it's an encouraging sign the housing market could be turning a corner. But before you start throwing confetti for comparison, the numbers last month were still 28.6% lower than in July 2019 before COVID hit. Apple is asking a federal judge to toss an antitrust case against it over its iPhones. P Apple says the suit is based on false claims about Apple being a closed ecosystem that suppressed innovation among competitors and even dimmed quality of third party products such as digital wallets used across platforms like Android. Apple says it has a right to develop its products its own way, and the Justice Department hasn't commented on the dismissal request. If you couldn't make it to France this summer to catch the Paris Olympics, you can live vicariously through some Olympic superfans. Fox News' Krista Mayo takes a closer look at all the excitement and how tourists are embracing the action-packed environments. Paris continues buzzing with Olympic activity, with thousands of tourists soaking up all the action from this year's summer games. People just get a kick out of my outfit. And while there's plenty of sports lovers, Vivienne Robinson is giving many of them a run for their money. I spent uh, over $10,000 to get here, and I almost maxed out all my credit cards. And I worked two jobs, ended up with 38 tickets to the games. The 66-year-old superfan has been to seven Olympics over the last 40 years. Her love affair started when her mother passed along pins from athletes she got during the 1984 Los Angeles Games, and she has no plans of ever slowing down. Once one Olympic is over, then I start planning for the next one. Other tourists, meanwhile, are flocking to the iconic Seine River. French officials have been trying to get the water clean enough to swim in after more than a century of pollution. After delays, officials on Wednesday gave the green light to have triathlon athletes swim in the river. Tourists, though, have mixed reactions. I will trust the professionals, but... I'm not sure if I would swim in it. I would try to get my head above my water and have a shower quickly yeah. afterwards. But one Olympic unifier among visitors seems to be their love of the Paris Olympic mascot. It resembles a cap worn by French revolutionaries. Tourists continue waiting in long lines for their chance to take one home. Olympic officials say souvenirs like this are big money makers. We expect to get more than 100 million euro of revenue for Paris 2024 based on the, on the sales of the merchandise. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Well, former college baseball players Chris Blydell and Justin Stanzini found themselves in the maternity ward together. Their wives each gave birth to twins on the same day. Mary Saladana reports. Crazy. I mean, we talked about like how cool it would have been to having the kids of the same day. Chris Blydell and Justin Stanitzi, both new dads of twins. These friends go back to their Framingham State days when they played shortstop and third base side by side. I um, when Justin and I were playing baseball at Framingham, we certainly didn't think that, you know, 11, 12 years later would be not only having boy girl fraternal twins, but also giving birth in the same hospital 
um, and being able to celebrate, you know, the best day of our lives together. But that's exactly what happened. The former teammates discovered they were both expecting twins via social media posts. Wives Michaela and Allison also embraced this shared journey toward parenthood. And it's just nice to have someone to bounce ideas and symptoms off of, make sure everything's normal. We shared the same doctor who said she was pretty sure we would both go a little bit earlier. So to have made it all the way to 38 weeks and deliver on the same day, the 21st, was incredibly crazy, yeah. These two sets of twins wound up on such a parallel path, they were born back to back with the same delivery team here at Mount Auburn Hospital. They actually ended up having to wait for us to finish delivering before all the doctors could come into their rooms. I sent him a text message being like, come on, you're holding us up. <laughs> now everyone is on baby time. Sloan and Salvatore for Justin and Allison, Reese and Brooks for Chris and Michaela. A pretty impressive starting lineup for two friends who went from catching ground balls to babies. A crazy blessing for both families. I'm excited for those annual birthdays, that's for sure. That's an incredible story. I mean, it what really are is. the odds? What uh, nearly impossible, yeah. probably <laughs> very low yeah. odds of that happening. <laughs> and what are the odds we're going to get a big break from the heat? Also pretty yeah. low, unfortunately, <laughs> but we are going to see about that much relief. You have to zoom way in on that, but about that much relief out there for us today. Let's start quick with the look outside uh, Moda or sorry, KDOT camera rather 69 and Kansas crossing in uh, just south of Pittsburgh. Looking pretty good this morning. We have a cold front that's slowly sinking to the south by this afternoon. It'll be far enough south that this north wind is going to bring in much drier air. So we're talking considerably lower humidity levels, which also means lower heat index value. So even though today's still going to be hot, it's going to be better than where we have been out there. Not doing too bad. 71 in Joplin. We're still close enough to the front, close enough to those dying showers, still a little muggy in Joplin. But the further north you go, the drier the air already is out there. And we're doing uh, pretty good temperature wise, low to mid 70s for most of us. We will still heat up today as we go into the morning. Again, partly cloudy skies, low mid 80s by 11 o'clock. Again, warm, well, hot today but better. We're going to talk about that and when dangerous heat returns here in just a moment, as well as the news you need to know right after this. Here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Missouri Governor Mike Parson announced an executive order which bans the sale of foods containing psychoactive cannabis compounds unless the establishment is an FDA approved source such as a licensed dispensary. The announcement comes as a way to decrease minors' access to cannabis products by banning the products from retail establishments with only a liquor license. Fairview Christian Church in Carthage is trying to make sure families have food ahead of the school year. They've opened their food pantry for anyone in need. The pantry will be opened every Thursday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. and now till November 14th. The Marian Days in Carthage officially kicked off yesterday. The four-day Vietnamese Catholic Festival draws visitors from around the nation and even from overseas. The Carthage Chamber expects this city to grow by 100,000 over the weekend, which could be a record turnout. The festival included a mass and procession last night. And it's still going to be hot today, but again, heat index values much lower. Low mid 90s for our highs with partly cloudy skies and gradually decreasing clouds. Heat index values, though, only two or three degrees warmer than the air temperature. So we're not talking into the triple digits, at least for today. So a little bit of a break from that oppressive heat, although again, still hot. Clear skies through the evening will fall back below normal mid to upper 60s with a few clouds here and there. Unfortunately, though, it's short lived. Still not too bad for our Saturday. Humidity levels gradually increasing. Then by Sunday, temperatures start to take off and take a look as we head into the next work week. We go back into the triple digits, putting our heat index values above 105 out there, and then maybe a few pop up storms toward the end of next week, which will also make it that much muggier. So enjoy today. I know it's hot, but you might be able to get a few more things done today uh, without it being so muggy out there. Absolutely. That's always a plus. Well, Jimmy Carter is getting a star studded centennial birthday party. Carter, the oldest living American president, will turn 100 on October 1st. 
The Carter Center says it will host a birthday bash at Atlanta's historic Fox Center on September 17th. Musical acts include country artist Eric Church, drive-by truckers, Allman Brothers band member Chuck Level, and Marin Morris. The event will also feature appearances by actor Sean Penn and Atlanta Braves legend Dale Murphy. Certainly a big celebration coming up for, for a very special person. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's an incredible life that he has lived. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We're back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.